Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another Factorio tutorial. My name's Negative Roots and I'm here with Zedith. Uh, we're in the Break the Game factory and today, well, Zedith and I, we're going to demonstrate uh, some advanced war fighting techniques. So while we uh, meander our way over to another base, we'll just talk briefly about how your Warframe should look. And now what is a Warframe? Warframe is that piece of armor that you use for fighting. Holy shit, this is a big lake. My my sense of directions is off. Now, the Warframe. I've got two sets of armor. So the first is the Warframe. It has three fusion reactors, four exoskeletons, and five shields. Now, if you wanted to, you could ditch an exoskeleton and replace that with two more shields. That would, um, that would get you a little bit more uh, tankiness if you find that you're taking up too much damage. I prefer the mobility because it allows me to run and run away very quickly. Now, just quickly, oh, I have a, another set of armor as well. And the other set, what it does is it is for... Can we close that? Thank you. It is for building. So you'll notice that it's the same thing. So three fusion reactors, four exoskeletons, and then a whole bunch of... Um, personal robo ports. So this will take 50 robots and that's that's just a little note. So I have two sets of armor. Okay, one's for battling, one is for building. Now when you get into the late game you end up with destroyer capsules. Now I'm going to assume that you know how to make them and what I'm going to show you is what happens when you wander straight into a nest. So Zedith, if you just give me a moment I want to demonstrate what happens when you attack a nest full on. Now I'll get my deployment up to 134 which is the maximum amount of destroyers that you can uh, have there we go 134 that's if you've got all the research now watch this if I run head-on into the thing I walk straight into a whole big bunch of biters this base wasn't too big that problem gets worse the larger the nest is the more people that you run head-on into so is that just give me a sec here Okay. When you walk head on into this, you end up getting a little bit picked on the way into the base. Ideally what you want to do at later stages of the game is you want to be taking out the spawners as quickly as possible. What happens with um, biters is that they respawn on a set time. Do you know what it actually is, Zedith? I'm not too sure, it, but it's it's fairly frequent. If you wipe yeah. out all the fighters in a nest, they will respawn fairly quickly. Let's have a look. So there was one. If we just watch this, oh shit. Oh shit. A lot more. You can see that they respawn fairly quickly, and even though I'm at max tech right now, uh, and a full deployment, well, pretty much a full deployment of destroyers, I'm having issues with them. So ideally what you want to do is you want to get into the nest as quickly as possible and wipe out all the spawners as quickly as possible. Now how do you do that with destroyers? When you have the destroyers de deployed, they will automatically target. So generally it works on proximity, so the closer you are the better targeted they'll be. So what we want to do is we want to run something called the J-hook. Now, basically, what we're going to do is take advantage of the biter's AI and slip past the initial charge. You can see that when I aggro them, you can see that they all come for me. So what we want to do is we want to get past this initial charge, get into the base before the next wave can spawn, if we're quick enough, and then take care of the stragglers. This is about the most effective way that I've seen of taking out enemies. So we'll demonstrate again. Now I'm just losing my destroyers. Now with larger scale bases, you will need to um, mix this up with distractors. You can see that once I'm in the middle of the base, the destroyers just take care of everything. With the larger bases, I'll show you theoretically what we need to do. Uh, we'll come over here. Now, say this base was much, much larger. What you may need to do is get into aggro range and then drop distractors over each of the spawners, just like this. You can see that now I have distractors on each of the spawners and you take out the base like that. Obviously, this being a relatively small biter base, it's not terribly hard. So I'll demonstrate again. 
so that you can see how to take this on. Now, the question is, why wouldn't you torrent creep? Well, something interesting, see I'll slip past the biters, get in the middle of the nest, and then just blow up the spawners. You see, I can take the damage, and uh, we can just wipe out the stragglers uh, after we've finished with the spawners. Turret Creep will be coded out of the game in upcoming updates, so it makes sense to kind of get used to this style now. You will have to go out and fight eventually. The next thing is, I can take out bases as fast as I can run. You can see I've wiped out all of this area and taken care of all of these bases, basically as fast as I can run, which means that you can be a lot more productive with your time. Have I missed anything, Zedif? I think, I think you've just about covered it there. Oh, um, that's a lot of talking. <laughs> you've done well. Look, go go play with it. I call it the J-hook. Basically, what you want to do is just run past that initial wave, get in the middle of the base, take out all the spawners, and uh, roll on from there. If, if you can take out all the spawners before the next wave spawns, uh, you will have the easiest time. If you let the biters respawn, uh, you're going to be fighting these enemies again and again and again. The, the spawners will never get tired, they'll never stop spawning enemies, so it's advisable to take them out as quickly as possible. So, I'll leave this video here, thank you very much for joining me, ladies and gentlemen, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.